Innovation, innovation, innovation. And that's why we are here at Startup One. We are new partners and we want to bring startups together with us to the market. So we want to scale things, want to make things happen, want to bring technology invented for life to the people. We at Startup Autobahn are focused on successful POCs and implementations. I think it's important that we have all kinds of collaboration and partnerships and new ideas. This is something that helps us to invent us in a new way. We do need to collaborate with startups and open innovation platform in order to bring solutions to markets fairly quickly, which have an impact on people and the planet. We have a great team of researchers around the globe. 18,000 people are employed at Mercedes-Benz R&D across the globe. That's a strong team, but we want to complement the strong team with the energy of startups. Startup Autobahn is really a great format for us to get our people in touch with multiple startups from all over the world. And this joint approach of collaborating really attracts the best startups from all over the world to come to Stuttgart and also provides our business units a great platform to work together with them. The collaboration with the corporate partners uh, in the Startup Autobahn program was a great experience for us. Uh, we have seen a very hands-on mentality, uh, great speed and a huge level of trust. This pilot project was amazing for us because we were able to develop our technology in collaboration with a, a pioneer in the marketplace. What we did was that we put our autonomous wheels on a cart and moved that in a shop floor from A to B. So basically it's about optimizing a manual process in, in their factory environment. Autopia and these systems have been working on a project which was presented here live to remotely control a car in Tel Aviv from Stuttgart, which is 4,000 kilometers away. And we did it only with public LTE networks. And so the project we did with Startup Autobahn is we partnered with one of the key partners and actually made the world's first car part made from CO2. It has been really amazing. We actually signed three pilot projects with three different partners and they have been really open-minded in finding use cases together with us, helping us accelerate as a small startup from Norway. We can build this ecosystem to make the digital transformation and possibly even sustainability more faster, better and cheaper. And that is what is been able to achieve here with Startup Autobahn and Plug and Play. Today we see amazing examples of startups and innovations and I'm sure together we will shape the future of sustainable mobility. Welcome everyone, uh, warm welcome to Startup Autobahn, powered by Plug and Play. Happy to have you all here and um, I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, good. It's our third public virtual event um, and this time hosted together with our fantastic partner Porsche. We hope you're all doing well and that you're excited to deep dive with us in our topic of today, new luxury.
And for all who are new in the round, like I know that there are people here from Singapore, Shanghai, Zuffenhausen, Silicon Valley and 38 other places. Welcome all of you to our Startup Autobahn family. My name is Hannah. I am the program manager at Startup Autobahn powered by Plug and Play on the, on the Plug and Play side. And with our Porsche Startup Autobahn and innovation team, Christoph and Andy as well my colleague Alina from the Venture team, we will guide you through the next uh, 90 minutes. Um, we could see like a shift in the luxury in the last years. And I think every one of us have a different kind of understanding what they are saying is luxury. So we want to invite you now to join us on the journey um, and to discover uh, with us in the next 90 minutes um, what actually like health and mental fitness and new communities and experience um, have to do with luxury and what it means for us and then define together with our partner Porsche and our external experts what new luxury is now and will be in the future. Before we will go a little bit more in details of today, uh, we want to say thank you. Uh, thanks to the team behind our co-hosting partner, Porsche. So Christoph, Andy and Lars, uh, to name the three, um, for defining the topic with us, like validating over 200 startups uh, with us beforehand to present you today the top nine uh, startups in the topic uh, we um, talked about earlier. And then as well, like setting up with us um, the whole lineup for this evening and uh, overall like working with us, the plug and play team hand in hand, as well with all other 26 platform partners to push innovation forward. And this not only for today, as well for our last uh, three years of collaboration. But let us have a look what you can expect today. So in the morning, we already met this is startup. So all our partners met in 90 one-on-one -on -one meetings and I hope you are all still awake and have the power to listen for the next 90 minutes um, to validate and discuss possible pilot projects um, to each other. And because at the end, our goal is to enable POCs um, to give like a long-term implementation in the products, processes and service at you at the partners. Um, so this is the reason we have the whole thing and right now the more fun part is starting. And what you can expect here, we have a really nice lineup for you. So Sasha will give you some more insights how our collaboration is um, with Porsche and our co-host uh, Christoph and Andy will share their view um, on how they are using our open innovation platform in their daily work and what they achieved so far as well what kind of internal goals they have with innovation and what like new luxury is for them and actually um, yeah my place is not so interesting like there so they are dialing in from a really really cool place you will see in two three minutes then we have a keynote from Dennis. He is global brand manager at Porsche. He will speak about new luxury. How does Porsche develop its brand in the future? And I already hear that he will show us a really cool small video clip at the end. I think everybody of us will enjoy. Then afterwards, Lars and Marco will share one use case, how maybe new luxury can look like if this is implemented at Porsche. Uh, the whole title, title is Healthy Driving, Collaboration between Climber Cell and Porsche. And every one of you who maybe uh, yeah, attended a few events beforehand, attended the last expo, you saw the video uh, on the beginning, uh, maybe recognize Climber Cell, what startup out of our last program. And we want to see more amazing results like this project between Climber Cell and Porsche. So we invited nine startups who will present their solution in three minute pitches and Alina from our venture team will guide you here through. And finally, uh, we will deep dive more in the topic of new luxury and invited for this our expert panel, including the wonderful Pam, uh, she's a researcher and a contributor at um, Forbes for luxury and retail. We have with us Sebastian Ackermann, brand manager at Porsche, and uh, George Wolf, he is uh, Managing Director and Co-Founder at Buckle and Seam and Forbes 30 under 30 for the um, uh, area of impact. Yeah, I would say this is an amazing lineup. I'm really happy that everybody is joining and uh, a big virtual applause to our host, our startups, all um, like external speakers and you that you're here with us today. And yeah, it was really much 
fun organizing this day and I'm really excited to listen to your thoughts, solutions and advices. If you want to read more about the speakers, uh, my colleague Alina already posted the Notion link or the briefing link in the chat. Here you will find like the speaker profiles, the startup profiles, um, if you want to get in touch with us as well, uh, a contact, so you can use the QR code, use the link in the chat, and I think the most of you got an email with the access to it as well. Normally, if we're hosting an event together with Porsche and uh, virtual is, of course, a new situation for us as well. Normally, we're doing it in person. I don't really have to ask um, that people using the hashtag Startup Autobahn um, or like to post something about the event. But um, yeah, this time, maybe you don't have a Porsche in front of you. So I would like uh, to hear your thoughts, your learning and impressions. And if you have anything to share, um, please use the hashtag Startup Autobahn. And I think with this, uh, all organization things are said. I'm really excited about the day. And I would like to hand it over to Sasha, who is uh, speaking uh, more about our collaboration with Porsche from the platform, uh, platform perspective. And before we will deep dive in more new luxury topics. Sasha, the screen is yours. Welcome back, everybody. I'd like to thank all participants for attending our third deep dive session of program eight and the first one hosted by one of our partners since the Corona pandemic at Germany. Porsche events have always been special. Porsche was the second OEM who joined the platform after Daimler initiated it in early 2016. It is clear that especially with Porsche's commitment and creating urgency between the OEMs on the platform, we were able to evolve to the best platforms for innovation in mobility in Europe and beyond. We do this by finding new cutting edge technologies outside of classic R&D with startups to quickly fill the gaps and the work of your engineers who have been driving the POCs and implementations forward. A special thanks to Oliver Blume, who agreed with the Daimler board to go forward with this initiative and keeps on being a high level supporter. Christian Knörle, who was our first so-called champion and an evangelist inside Porsche for startup collaboration and the Startup Autobahn projects. Christian led the first projects to success. Patrick Cook, who supported Startup Autobahn from Porsche strategy from day one. Christoph Acker and Andy Grau, our current champions at Porsche and managing innovation activities uh, and startup collaborations. If anybody from Porsche has an interest, questions or ideas about past, current or future projects, please bet, get, get in touch with Christoph or Andy. And to give you a little snapshot, since the beginning of Startup Autobahn, Porsche created a total of 70 POCs with startups. And about, about a quarter of them have been or are in implementation. And why do we do this? We like to bring together entrepreneurs and industry experts to solve problems of inefficiency or also to find new business models, which in my opinion is much more fun. And this is what we like to focus on today. We will look at some great new tech, which will increase the cabin experience and passenger well-being, safety, awareness, and productiveness in the car. Our senior program manager, Hannah, will tell you more about what we you will experience today. With that, Hannah, the stage is yours, and wishing everybody a great and productive time, and hopefully see many of you in person soon again. Thank you. Sasha, amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and what is coming now. Later on, you will meet two of our champions, but overall the champion team is so much bigger. The champions are our colleagues from our partners we're working on a daily basis. So it's not only my team I'm working with from the plug and play side, like with 26 partners, we have at least one person we always work and it's really amazing that we could extend the collaboration and yeah, my own team to all of them. And I getting right now the information, our team is ready to handle over to other colleagues. So you don't have to see me right now, later we see us again. And I would say 
One second. So, okay. Okay, guys. So we're working with Christoph, you see him on the left on the picture, and Andy uh, together to bring innovation to our partner Porsche. We're setting up the whole day with it. And um, what I already mentioned beforehand, normally if we have an event together, we're doing it in the Porsche Museum. And you have all the nice cars around, you see somebody on stage, and that you don't like miss this experience, I would say, Christoph, are you ready? Hi everybody, and thank you Hannah for this very kind introduction. On behalf of Porsche, I want to welcome you to our first fully virtual Startup Autobahn meetup focused on the topic of new luxury. Under normal circumstances, we have invited you, the participating startups, as well as the corporate partners from Startup Autobahn, to visit us here in our historic headquarter in Stuttgart Zuffenhausen. In personal one-on-one -on -one meetings, the participating startups, as well as the Porsche experts, would have had the opportunity to discuss innovative ideas and identify areas for future collaboration. Unfortunately, due to the current contact and travel restrictions, this was not possible today. Nevertheless, banking on innovation is a mindset, which can't be stopped by social distancing. Even if we are separated as an innovation community, we stand closer together than ever. Therefore, today, innovation enthusiasts from across the globe joined our meetings. This included various cities like Shanghai, Singapore, Berlin, Moscow, and Tel Aviv, even San Francisco. And with this meetup streamed live in the entire world, we can proudly say that today we host Porsche's largest startup Autobahn event ever. This being said, we want to take you on a tour through our corporate headquarters, where we built up to this day our famous sports car icon, the 911, and since last year, also our fully electric Porsche Taycan. More than 70 years ago, Porsche started right here as a garage startup itself. Innovation has always been a big part of our corporate culture. However, the way how we innovate has changed over time. Whereas in the past, the main driver for innovation was bringing knowledge from the racetrack on the street, nowadays, as the demand that customer place on cars and mobility in general changed dramatically, and new technologies surrounding electrification, digitization, and autonomous driving become more and more important, we follow a more broader approach to innovation. This includes next to working together with our existing suppliers, also working together with innovative startups, investing in promising companies and building strategic alliances. We are eager to learn from new, unfamiliar partners. Our ambition is to drive with them the sporty, exclusive mobility of the future. We offer those startups 70 years of experience as a successful sports car manufacturer and a platform to grow. I want to introduce you now to my colleague Andy, who will introduce you how we foster at innovation at Porsche and how we operate within the Startup Autobahn platform. Thank you, Christoph. Let me introduce you to Open Innovation at Porsche. At Porsche, it is key co-working with startups, suppliers and external individuals when it comes to innovation. Therefore, we established a Open Innovation strategy and developed specific tools. For instance, we created the first fully digital open innovation platform at Porsche called Porsche Next OI. Here, external individuals and startups have the opportunity to develop specific apps and send them over to Porsche. Besides this, we scout internationally via agencies and international consulates for interesting companies. Furthermore, we have developed a program called Supplier Innovation Days, where we invite only the best suppliers to present their innovative ideas for Porsche. Finally, Startup Autobahn is one of our most important startup programs when it comes to open innovation. We are proud that we are already a partner since 2017. Since then, the platform developed to the most important program here in Europe. We are proud that many corporates are joining, like in 2020, Bosch and ADAC. We are happy that within Porsche, nearly every department already operated a innovation project via Startup Autobahn. In average, we operate 10 projects per wave. We are happy that we already have more than 70 projects via Startup Autobahn. Some of them are already well known by the press, international venture funds, and of course by you and our customers. Projects with high mobility, way, way and way ahead were quite successful. 
When you compare the success rate via startup Autobahn at Porsche to normal innovation rates, it's quite high. To keep up the pace, we dig into new topics that are relevant for our customers and to Porsche right now and even more important in the future. Therefore, we created today's Startup Autobahn Deep Dive to focus on the topic of new luxury. The topic of new luxury is split by Porsche into two areas. Firstly, health and mental fitness. Secondly, experiences and communities. Now we can be excited how Dennis Keskin, our worldwide brand manager, is interpreting new luxury, how we develop our brand in the future and what role collaborations will play. Ladies and gentlemen, also welcome from my side. I am Dennis, I'm responsible for brand management at Porsche and I'm quite pleased to have the opportunity to talk with you a little bit about the Porsche brand and its future direction. And uh, talking about brands is quite interesting because I think very rarely we are aware of the fact how much they determine our daily lives and what we do on a daily basis. So let's travel back to the beginning of brands and uh, the word brand actually originated from Branding, so actually the sign that you put, for instance, on your cattle. So you see, at the beginning, brand was really closely associated with possession. But of course, that evolved over time. And there was an interesting time in history at the end of the 19th century when international trade started to kick off. And, you know, we had these little corner shops where you could go and buy different types of food. And when you think about it, this was the first time when brands really had to provide an orientation about quality, about origin, and so the role of brands shifted. And over the next hundred years or so, I think something you all witnessed, advertising was developed as an art form, if you like, and brands started to become ideas in the minds of the consumers. And at the end of that development, we have quite an interesting point of time, the year 2007. Now, 2007 was the year the iPhone was introduced, and this has been, you know, analyzed over and over again in terms of what it changed in our daily lives in terms of digitization. But I'd like to look at it from a brand perspective, because think about it, before this invention, if you wanted to be the user of a certain brand, you either had to buy the product, you had to go to someone who owned the product, or you had to go to a physical location to have a look at the product. But now with the iPhone, it changed dramatically because you could wake up at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night and solicit a response from your chosen brand. And so for us as brand managers, it meant you really had to look holistically at the experience of the customer. And this is why I think it's fair to say brands are now an experience. And that is still very much true, but we think that development will go even further than that. Because in the future, we believe Brands will be relationships. And by that I mean, really, that the brands that you choose in your daily life, the brands that you show yourself with, the brands that you consume, they will have an impact on the way that you portray yourself as a person and you will pick them just as you pick your friends and your acquaintances at the moment as a relationship. And once you have bought into that insight that brands will be relationships, there is a really fundamental shift in perspective we have to do. And if you look at the history of brands and how they've been communicated, I think it's pretty clear that brands tended to look at themselves in the mirror and then talk very positively about how they saw themselves through advertising, right? And that self-centered view, in our point of view, is not future-proof. In the future, it will be about what you can contribute to the world, to society. And that change of perspective is pretty fundamental because it requires soul-searching. It requires you to really think about why you exist as a brand and why the world, let's put it that way, is better with you, except without you. And in the case of Porsche, we have embarked on a long internal journey to find the answer to that um, very fundamental question. And the answer for us is a really simple formula, and we call it driven by dreams. And for us, this means as a brand in the future, the place that we want to have in the hearts and the minds of consumers shall be described by that feeling of making a dream come true. That is what Porsche shall be about. 
driven by dreams. Now, there are two elements to driven by dreams. There's this dream connection, something that you aspire to, something that motivates you, but there's also this part of being driven by, not only to sit there and be passive in your dreaming, but to go about it with positive energy and to change things. And this is why we think Driven by Dreams is so befitting to the Porsche brand, to us. Because look, in the mission statement of our founder, Ferry Porsche, we already had this sentence where he said, in the beginning, I looked around, but could not find the car I dreamed of. So I decided to build it myself. So it's a very, if you like, credible extension of what we stand for right from the beginning. Secondly, if you think of our customers, when we ask them what their primary purchase motivation was, it is the brand. And some people are surprised by it because, of course, performance and design are important purchasing reasons, but brand is number one. And when we talk about them, about their purchase, they say, you know, when I bought the Porsche, I had this special feeling. I had the feeling for myself that a dream came true. You see, another proof point for this. And then finally, if you look into the future, into society and think how luxury will be understood. And we talked about new luxury today already. We think the true luxury will be if you can go about your dreams. And so we think this idea is also future-proofing our brands in terms of its development. And that's maybe another interesting avenue for Driven by Dreams. Of course, when we look at our current business opportunities and how we can possibly expand them, this idea of the brand purpose, Driven by Dreams, provides a very interesting orientation because it helps us to maintain that very special spot in the hearts and the minds of our consumers, the one place that hopefully only we can occupy, and it gives us a direction where we can evolve our business model to in the future. Now, lastly, talking about purpose-driven uh, brands and the world of new luxury, I think it's also pretty important that we stay connected to the cultural world around us. People need to have a positive cultural connection to us as a brand. Our purpose is the why, how that should happen, but we also have to find the right channels to address new target groups and to convey that message. And to end my little impulse talk here, I've brought along a very interesting example for that because we did a very fun project with Sony at the beginning of this year, um, a film that you might've heard of, it's called Bad Boys. And I hope you will enjoy the next couple of seconds just as much as Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. So thanks for your attention and Stay tuned. You lost your damn mind. Even the Batmobile don't hold the road like this, bitch. Tight pants and fast cars don't make you Batman, Mike. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Get me the fuck out of this car. We have now received great insight from Dennis how we perceive new luxury and how we want to develop our brand in the future. But what happens today? Therefore, we want to speak with Lars and Marco, who already integrate new luxury features in existing products. Hi guys, my name is Lars. I'm Innovation Manager at Sales and Marketing at Porsche. And for us at Porsche, and especially for us in innovation management of sales and marketing, new luxury is also about allowing ourselves to think outside the box and to turn ideas into reality that at first glance seems to be maybe far off and sometimes incompatible. But that is what I really like on, on my job. And furthermore, this was exactly the case when I got in touch with our head of roads, Marco, and I was telling him something about a concept that was playing around with um, new luxury of health. And he was totally into the concept. He immediately sparked a fire of ideas. And that was the moment when the project with our friends from Klamasa was born. And now I would love to give you some insights into the project. I will show you a video and Marco will explain you what we have done uh, with our friends from Klamasa so far. And please enjoy the video. Draven. That is freedom in its purest form. It's a universal language that is understood no matter where you travel to. Taking your beloved car along beautiful countrysides, discovering new destinations, going fast. Passion for driving 
has many exciting facets and we celebrate all of them within the Rhodes community. We created Rhodes because we want to connect people from all over the world through their passion for driving. It's free of charge, open for everyone and available for download on the App Store. Centerpiece of the application is the ability to record and share your road trips or experience those of other passionate drivers thanks to the built-in Apple CarPlay compatible navigation. Driving should be fun and safe. So we teamed up with our new friends from Planacell because we believe that being conscious of your health has never been more important. That's why we want to enable our users to include this aspect into their road trip experience. So how does that work? We added a brand new safety layer to the Rhodes application powered by Climacell technology. Based on your current location, it provides you with an air quality score that takes hazardous factors such as particulate matter, nitrogen oxide, ozone or sulfur trioxide into consideration. This is important as over the course of a drive, a vehicle's interior cabin can accumulate levels of gases that can be dangerous by inhalation. Your respiratory system might be exposed to a significant amount of pollution in a short period of time. For this purpose, we integrated a simple signal that indicates the status of the air around you and recommends driving related actions such as open or close windows, take an alternative route or reschedule your trip. Working with Climacell is not only very informative, but most of all an interpersonally very pleasant experience. We really enjoyed the open-minded exchange, solution-focused mindset and well-documented product. The feature will be available for download in its first version by mid of July. Depending on the user feedback, we will consider an ongoing integration. Thank you, Marco and Lars, for the great insights into your innovation project with Climacell via Startup Autobahn. That's it from our end here in Zuffenhausen. Now back to Hannah from Plug and Play. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Christoph, Dennis, Lars, Marco. Amazing uh, that every department at Porsche did a project already. I'm really excited to see what is coming after today. I really loved the comment from Christoph uh, that he was saying like social distancing should not stop innovation. And as well, Dennis, he was comment that uh, brands are experience. So I would say let's experience Startup Autobahn and meet the startups of today to get projects like Climacell and Porsche on the road and not to stop innovation. And for this, I would like to introduce to uh, into to the introduce you to Alina from our venture team. And Alina, are you ready to deep dive with us in the focus topics? I am, Hannah. Thank you very much. Um, yes, as Hannah mentioned, welcome also from my side. My name is Alina. I'm part of the venture team here at Startup Audubon Plug and Play. And it's my pleasure to yeah, guide you through the startups of the day. Uh, as Hannah mentioned, we've had a total of 10 startups with us this morning, actually spanning the entire globe, as you can see in this map. So from five different countries, including the US, Germany, the UK, Israel, all the way to Singapore. And it's my pleasure to announce that nine of them will actually be pitching here today uh, during our, our meetup. Um, we focused on two topics this morning uh, in the field of new luxury. But before we turn our attention towards communities and new experiences, we're actually going to kick it off with health and mental fitness. I mean, Dennis was mentioning it earlier, Brands will be relationship and in order for a relationship to work, obviously you need to know each other very well. And that's what we were aspiring to do to uncover the black box of human behavior, medical and behavioral data to enable more personalized brand experiences. And with that, I'd actually like to hand over right, right away to our first startup, Datalytics from Singapore. They analyze behavioral and lifestyle data to identify the risk factors on mental health and well-being. So please enjoy the first pitch of the day. Thank you. 
next startup is from Berlin and has made it its mission to help people be more in the flow. So let's give it up in a virtual round of applause for Jonas from FlowLab. Hi, my name is Jonas and I'm one of the founders of FlowLab. Imagine you just bought a brand new Porsche. You're super excited to drive it to work through the city and you're ready to put the pedal to the metal. But unfortunately, today is one of those days. And every time you begin to pick up some speed, you hit a red light. You lose your momentum entirely and you have to restart the acceleration from zero. So this rather frustrating experience does not even get you close to unleashing the engine's real potential. Now you can think of this Porsche engine as being your brain power and the red traffic lights are distractions. And let's face it, we live in a world full of distractions. It has never been harder than today to focus and be productive, especially for an upcoming generation of young professionals who grew up with social media and smartphones. Being distracted is the norm, not the exception. And work, we're distracted around 87 times per day. That's every six minutes. And the cost of distraction is huge. Research shows that these frequent interruptions actually cause us to work faster, which leads to more time pressure, stress, and potentially burns us out. And what's just as bad is that when we constantly distract ourselves at work, it harms our ability to access the so-called flow state. A mental state where we're so deeply focused and immersed in what we do that peak performance and productivity just feel fun and effortless. The McKinsey study with executives has shown that when we are in flow, we're up to five times more productive. The problem is that most of us only spend up to 10% of the workday in the state of peak productivity. At FlowLab, we are driven by the potential that we can unleash if we help people increase this percentage, even just by a little bit. So we are developing the first fully digital mental coaching solution that helps ambitious people achieve peak performance and productivity by getting into this flow state more consistently. Compared to existing mental health solutions, FlowLab changes the game by, first of all, going beyond mindfulness meditation. FlowLab provides a holistic mental training program with guided audio sessions that combine methods from cognitive behavioral therapy acceptance and commitment therapy, and mental coaching, and that is specifically designed to help people achieve peak performance states. Secondly, we make mental fitness measurable through a combination of subjective user feedback and continuous sensor-based measurement of objective vital parameters, such as heart rate variability. We strive to quantify the user's mental fitness and also to accurately track the different emotional states that a user experiences throughout the day. And lastly, we create intelligently personalized training experiences. Based on the variety of the collected data, we are developing a fully personalized training experience that adjusts to the user's goals, training progress, and emotional needs in real time. We launched a solution that is focused on optimizing productivity in the work context. Potential use cases for our technology, however, can be extended to pretty much any activity that requires focused attention such as driving a car, as well as engaging in professional or amateur sports or creative performances. So we're very much looking forward to exchanging ideas around potential use cases for your company and target groups. Thank you very much. Another Berlin-based local is Kenku. They have developed a pocket stress expert to measure stress resistance via the smartphone camera. Stress is a big threat to society. Numbers are increasing, reaching pandemic disease dimensions. And so far, no sustainable solution has been found for it. Stress is a very personal experience. We all react to stresses differently. What is stressful for the one is quite normal for the other. Reactions to stresses and stress coping strategies vary. We also have different symptoms, ranging from mental symptoms, 
such as fatigue, to physical symptoms such as migraines and chronic pain. What helps us to relieve stress is also individual. For some people, mindfulness meditations work, others prefer progressive muscle relaxation. Our solutions consist of three units. First, we capture vital user data of each individual user. Then, we use the data to create a digital twin. And finally, based on this individual stress profile, we recommend personalized interventions, almost like Netflix for stress. We've built a full stack solution for stress. Full stack means that we put all the complexity of personal stress into an IT stack, consisting of a convenient app in the front end, which gives users day-to-day guidance, a middleware which uses data to give users the best interventions, and the deep data backend, where all information is securely stored to be used for data science and medical research. Our Stress Guide app is certified as a medical device across Europe. We help our users to recognize, understand, and take control of their stress. We measure stress to qualify and quantify the personal stress experience. Think of it like measuring your blood sugar. You have to know where you stand in order to find the best treatment for you. Our interventions are based on breathing exercises, mindfulness meditations, and life coaching lessons, which can easily be expanded using our Stress Guide course editor. We are the only app that can provide feedback on interventions, so we learn what is effective for the individual user and what is not. Based on that, our AI system is learning, much like Netflix for stress interventions. Since we launched, we have gained a lot of traction in Asia, Europe, and the USA, with an overall download of 400,000 so far. Our first data insights show a huge impact on our users. They have a better mood, better HRV values, and lower stress levels. Effective stress management can be incorporated and utilized within vehicles to create an all-round safer driving experience by building your ideal driving companion. This creates an all-encompassing driving environment whereby the driver can safely and efficiently identify and consequently deal with stressful situations on the road. The vehicle becomes a holistic health center, collecting vital data via sensors and guiding based on this data. We help you to expand your driving environment to encompass an all-round approach to a safe and enjoyable driving experience. Have we awakened your curiosity? Feel free to contact our management team for ideas, collaborations, and further concept discussions. We are excited to work together towards creating a holistic health experience while driving. Next up, we got MIND, a London-based startup that predicts the state of mental health based on body signals and language. Hi, I'm Martin, CEO and founder of MIND, where we're building uh, technology for tracking, understanding, and improving mental states of individuals. And I'm going to give you a short presentation now, sharing my screen. We're building an AI system for mental well-being and performance. And we're all human, all too human, and uh, we make costly and dangerous mistakes. And the common thread in these human uh, errors is almost always a lack of awareness of how we currently feel our current state and lack of ability to manage this mental state. There are ways currently of tracking and managing mental states, but these are bulky and complex, highly limited, or requiring a lot of manual effort or not very accurate. Our proprietary BioXLP technology combines the, all these approaches. It's voice-based, biometrics-based, real-time, it's automated, and it combines other modalities of data. We even use brain activity and sleep data, environmental context for training our AI, and we, uh, this approach is multimodal. It combines these different input modalities, but it does actually work just from voice. We can predict stress levels and emotional state just from voice. Um, but uh, if other uh, data sources like consumer wearables, in-car sensors, environmental sensors are available, we make optimal use of them for making more accurate and more detailed predictions. Our own product provides these insights, but more, most importantly, provides highly targeted, personalized suggestions for improving the individual state of mind. 
And these are basically given at the right time based on the user's current state of mind. Some screenshots and like I mentioned, brain computer interfaces are not something of the future. We actually use it today for improving our AI uh, in the training process. This is our core team and both me and uh, the company were at a unique uh, and powerful intersection of neuroscience, AI and biometrics and physiology. And uh, we brought some of the neuroadaptive algorithms and brain computer interface uh, algorithms from my PhD work, uh, which was funded by the UK Ministry of Defense. And I've applied it in public sector, industry settings, uh, uh, research, clinical settings. And this is a very, very powerful approach that we are bringing here that most people uh, do not have. We have a great team of advisors and collaborators, partners and investors. And I'm gonna quickly show you three use cases, uh, potential use cases. So the in-car well-being assistant is, uh, we imagine Aurora could be integrated with every car providing insights and suggestions on the dashboard through through the voice through a voice interface with the car integrating with consumer wearables and um, potentially also driving the cars uh, self-driving features partly or fully activating them on the basis of the driver uh, when they're too stressed tired angry or inattentive or when the passengers are distracting the driver we can also tune then entertainment and music system uh, based on how uh, the driver and passengers currently feel as well as show where you can stop on, on route um, to for entertainment value or for well-being value. And all these three things, of course, can be combined. And we're really excited to uh, explore integrating our technology into cars. Thank you very much. Our last startup for the first session is Smido, a company from Berlin that has developed the vital sign monitoring solution. Hi, my name is David Weimer, and I would like to present to you SMEDO, world's most advanced contactless biometrics. We developed a technology that measures vital signs over a distance of up to seven meters, even in the absolute dark and even through fabric. Before you start reading the text now, I would ask you to focus on the picture of the baby, because this is how measurement of vital signs is being done today. It needs a lot of wires. It is not really effective during motion and it restricts the movement of the patients. And it's been done with expensive bulky devices. Smedo provides a maximum freedom and comfort for personal and patients, providing accurate vital data with zero disruptions. If you think about the applications that would be possible with such a technology, you would come up with 1000 ideas and you can be sure we would come up with another 1000 ideas because we thought a long time about that. So we came up to focus on four parts to use that technology by reason. First one is to measure the vital signs of babies to prevent the sudden infant death syndrome. The second one, the elderly care market is especially the assisted living part because that's a huge market. The third one is measurement of vital signs as a replacement for an ECG in the hospital. And the third one would be mobile devices to give nurses and doctors the possibility to measure wherever they are. So how is it being done? We developed a sensor technology. You see the sensor here in the middle. So that's already a sensor on chip that uses sub terahertz radar to measure vital signs through the micro vibrations of your skin. And all that's been done with a resolution up to the sweat depths of your skin. Before you now say, Ooh, radar sounds dangerous and harmful, we used the sub terahertz band by reason. And that's what the whole system makes special because we are 100% reflected by the first layer of the skin. So there's no harm to any cells, even if you measure 24 seven. Of course, we already founded a GmbH and we hired some people, obviously. We have our MVP ready and we even started the medical certification process. There are a lot of numbers where we can prove how big the market is we're talking about. If you have some time, click pause on the video. I would like to explain that to you in a one-to-one -one meeting. We already have a great team to achieve our goals, starting with Mr. Thomas Grenner, who has more than 30 years of experience 
as a leader in tech companies and startups and ending up with Mr. Professor Dr. Alexander Kalpin, who is the world leader for vital sign radar measurements. So I don't know if you sense a business opportunity here, but we sense vital signs. So that will be the second part now to pause that video and write down the contact details you see there and get in touch with me. I would love to talk with you in person. Looking forward to hear from you soon. Okay, bye. So those were all of the startups on the topic of health and mental fitness. Our second session today, we focus on new experiences and communities and looked at startup technologies that can help to enhance brand loyalty and identification. So for all the trivia fans out there, this first one's going to be for you. It's called Labworks, a company from London that has developed voice enabled games for trivia and daily quizzes. and thank you for inviting me here today. I'm Fiona Kate Morgan, the Chief Operating Officer for Labworks.io, and my team are the number one voice game creators in Europe. Our games are played by millions of people each year, mostly at the moment through Alexa and Google Assistant devices, but we're looking for opportunities to expand access to our award-winning games. Games remain the top interactive use of voice-controlled devices outside of standard transactional services like setting alarms or asking for music. We make games that are known for their premium quality. They're appropriate for all ages and often have an educational element. We don't charge money for consumables, catching parents out when their children have racked up a huge bill. Instead, we offer access to all premium features in all of our games in one monthly subscription. It's only 99p a month and we call it Voice Arcade. To give you an idea of the games we make, here's Would You Rather. Alexa. 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 Open Would You Rather. Welcome to Would You Rather. Answer my quirky questions to find out if the rest of the world thinks the same. When you're ready to play, just say begin. Begin. Would you rather be attractive with a silly voice? <laughs> or normal looking with a normal voice? <laughs> Attractive with a silly voice. Attractive with a silly voice. Mm -hmm. See from the clips that our games focus around in-person multiplayer, social gaming that anyone of any generation can enjoy. There's no complicated setup, no learning to use a piece of hardware and no expensive investment. And that's the beauty of voice gaming. It can be accessed anywhere by anyone. You're actually getting an early sneak peek of Voice Arcade as it's not live to the public just yet. The games are live, but we're expecting to launch a subscription in the UK, US and Germany by the end of the month, with France, Spain and Italy following shortly after. That's right, six countries. We're actually available in 12 different countries with our games in seven different languages, and that's always expanding as devices grow to support more locales. Now, if you're wondering how we've come to be labelled the number one voice gaming studio in Europe, well, we've combined experience in the voice industry of nearly 17 years. Alexa only launched in November 2014, so that's pretty good going. Myself and our CEO, Tom Hewitson, are both recognised as Alexa champion developers by Amazon, and we're both regularly invited to speak at industry events worldwide to share our learnings and advance the industry. If that's not enough to convince you that voice gaming is the way forward, why not give our games a go by saying, Alexa, play Trivia Hero, or hey Google, talk to Would You Rather. Thank you. In case you're planning on going to a new destination, Travelock will help you to find this hotspot based on your friends' recommendations. <laughs> Hello everyone who is taking part in the Startup Autobahn conference. We are Travelog, a Munich-based travel tech startup specialized in matching tailor-made recommendations for restaurants, hotels and other gastronomy places with the preferences of the users. 
We have recognized that there is still no adequate solution in the market that makes it easy and quick to find exactly the places that most likely correspond to the own taste. This is why we at Travelog concentrate on tailor-made recommendations and the technology required to match these recommendations with the interests of the customer. This means that we now have a constantly growing database with thousands of places in the premium segment with highly detailed information about each place and constant updating of the data. We do not see ourselves as the next Google Places, but much more as a digital and highly customizable substitute to each existing travel guide. But how do we see a high relevance with Travelog for the car industry? Firstly, in the days of new normality, we expect that more travelers will start their holidays by car due to safety and convenience reasons. Secondly, through autonomous driving in the future, the board entertainment will gain more importance than before. Lastly, personalization becomes a more and more key factor for success in the future as customers continuously seeking for more content that is tailored to their needs. How is Travelog different from any other provider of recommendations? We pair AI and expert knowledge to get a deep understanding of places and match them with the relevant target group. We dig deeper into the places than any other platforms when it comes to analyzing the places thoroughly. Based on the set of information, the places receive attributes via automated labeling. Labeling contains all relevant information about a place so that we are able to fully categorize them. After successfully labeling the places, we can also recommend the right places for the right occasions, like a business lunch or a family restaurant. So how do we match the right places with the right target group? To achieve the best result, we collect a lot of relevant information, both in places as well as on the customer side, to maximize the match score. Information we collect about places may be price, kitchen style, atmosphere, interior, crowd, and many more. On the customer side, we gather information that may contain vehicle type, vehicle equipment, age, gender, previous addresses from the navigation system, and so on. We also include aspects that seem unusual at first, like what kind of music the customer is listening to. All that affects the set of recommendations a customer will get suggested. With our solution, we can help take the personalization to a new level by providing customers with tailor-made recommendations in various categories while driving. Thank you for your attention. Don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We would love to get to know you in person and discuss the future of mobility with you. And last but not least, we have Trip Scout from Chicago with us today to help you find the most fun and interesting things to do and explore based on the location you are at. Hello, guten tag. I'm Konrad Walshevsky. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Trip Scout. We've built the number one ranked trip planning and travel entertainment app in the App Store. And we've been able to do that through the powerful technology that we've built. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about and how it could benefit you. So what we've done is we've built a real-time index of every piece of travel content in the world. And we've used machine learning and natural language processing to know exactly who will find that piece of content most interesting and most relevant. And we've tied in a lot of social hooks to be able to know across uh, the entire internet what each of those personas will find what piece of content most engaging. So then we're able to deliver this highly personalized, highly contextual feed of recommendations based on your specific persona. And what we've also done through our natural language processing is we've extracted every point of interest mentioned in that article and we've tied it back to our database of over 100 million points of interest in the world. So we're able to give you this highly engaging content feed and highly contextual personalized point of interest recommendations that you can then use to find really great things around you, whether it's in your hometown, or whether you're on a road trip somewhere, or what we've typically focused on is once you're traveling to a new destination. And how is this relevant to you? Well, we can learn a lot of just basic information already from data from the car. Like we know the weather, we know the, the day, we know the point of interest, we know where you're departing from, we know where you're going. We also know based on the type of car, probably 
what kind of uh, budget and uh, economic status the person is in. We also know how many people are in the car at any given time. So with that basic amount of input and data, we can then tell your customers every single thing that they should be aware of, whether it's where they should go eat, what point of interest are around them, or uh, what are some really great things they should read and know about in the destination or on their road trip. We can also easily use one of the off-the-shelf tools that reads out articles for you to perhaps read the articles that you will find most interesting as the person is driving on a road trip. So this puts you at not just the center of the, the journey or the road trip because they're in your car, but also puts you as the trusted source of entertainment, of lifestyle, all the things around the travel experience that usually happens once you leave the car will now allow you to be a part of that experience as well. All right, so those were all of the startup pitches of the day. I hope you got very inspired and yeah, wanna start your project or collaboration right away. If any of these startups were interesting to you, um, please check the Notion file that we also shared in the Q&A function. Um, you can find all the pitch decks there. We will also share the videos later, so that should help you. And if you want to get in touch with any of them, please contact the Startup Audubon team. We'd be happy to put you in contact with the startups. So with that, I'd like to hand over back to Hannah for our next very exciting program point and hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. Bye. Thank you, Alina. Um... It was really cool. I love the solutions and I'm really excited to see what you guys will develop together on it and who we will hopefully see in our next program. So on one side, we heard from Porsche and the startups which direction new luxury is going to. And we thought that maybe we should open up the discussion on the topic new luxury and yeah, if there's like a, maybe a big change on it. And uh, for this, we invited three experts. So I already mentioned them a little bit earlier beforehand. It's uh, Georg Wolf, co-founder and managing director at Buckle and Seam. It's like a leading premium lifestyle brand for men. And he was named twice as Forbes 30 under 30 for social impact. Then we have Sebastian Ackermann with us. He has like more than six years uh, experience um, in the automotive sector and uh, is brand manager. He worked uh, with product strategy and marketing communication and is responsible for the brand strategy, including the Porsche Brand Academy. And on the beginning, I was researching on new luxury and innovation because for me, it was it really hard to define, okay, what is really new luxury? What it means? Is it like a new brand? Is it like a new experience? So I put like new luxury and innovation on Google and on the third article, uh, the third results was a Forbes article um, who called like luxury brands, innovation and new luxury, but uh, necessary or something like this. And it was really nice written, uh, was really on the point and um, written from Pam. So I was like getting her uh, to on LinkedIn was asking like, do you would like to join our panel? She's uh, called as like luxury woman to watch. She like wrote eight, nine uh, books. One was about Henry's, uh, like millennials that matter most and what they are kind of looking for luxury brands. And I would say I hand over to you, Pam, to give us introduction to your results from your research on new luxury and then afterwards invite the other panelists on it. Pam, are you online? I, I should be. Do you hear me? Wonderful. And I can see you as well. So, oh, this is your Pam. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 All the way from America. <laughs> yes. If we could have slide one, please. And I, I welcome you all and I thank you for joining us today and what promises to be, I think, a very lively discussion about new luxury. Remember back in the day when we talked about disruption in terms of e-commerce, millennials and new competitors? That seems almost quaint now, considering the disruption we've all been through. Everyone, everywhere is facing dis massive disruption to business as usual. The coronavirus pandemic shut down much of the consumer economy across the world. People are challenging authority and the cultural elites with such emotion 
that violent protests have erupted in Paris, Hong Kong, and most recently in cities across the United States. The sparks that have ignited these protests may be different, but the goals are the same. The attempted destruction and re reconstruction of establishment institutions. And along with these protests has come pushback against income inequality, which is a growing threat to luxury brands which traditionally target the most wealthy consumers. With consumers in retreat and under threat, they focus on the bottom levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs to preserve their health and safety while foregoing concerns with the higher level needs of social connecting and belonging, esteem and self-actualization. It is to these higher level needs that luxury purchases have historically been targeted. The result is that consumers shift their spending from discretionary purchases to necessity purchases that preserve rather than enhance their luxury lifestyle. Because of this, we've seen luxury being one of the first sectors in what is becoming in becoming the in an, in their economic retreat and it is likely to be the last one out when it comes to economic recovery if i could have slide two please for the past three years unity marketing my company in association with luxury daily has conducted a state of luxury study surveying industry executives uh, that the people that work for luxury companies and those who work for businesses that provide services to luxury brands such as advertising agencies. This study provides an insider's look at the challenges and opportunities luxury brands face in the rapidly evolving luxury market. Throughout the three years of our study, we've tracked continued challenges from, from about the need to adapt the industry's definition of luxury to align with the consumers. Luxury, as we find in the culture, is a most overused term, and it means vastly different things to different people. Like beauty, luxury is in the eye of the beholder, and what is luxury to one consumer may be ordinary to another. It has resulted in what I consider a crisis of meaning for luxury brands, as this luxury executive said in that survey. It is not so much that luxury has lost its meaning as it is that luxury has to evolve its meaning. Now it is much more of an omni-channel experience. It gives us the opportunity to redefine luxury as a service or an experience versus simply being an object of desire. And on slide three, I will end with a, a, a quote by Albert Einstein who said, out of clutter, find simplicity. From discord, find harmony. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. And I can't think of a better description of where we are today. We are cluttered, we are facing tremendous discord and tremendous difficulties in our business. So with that, I will um, want to start with our panel. Um, we have George from Buckle and Seam and Sebastian who represents Porsche. And my first question, and I think this is this is the big one uh, for for all of you. Um, well, I'm just curious um, for the panel, how do you define the meaning of new luxury in the context of the massive cultural, economic, and technological shifts that we've seen in the luxury target market? Who wants to go first? Good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, well, for me, luck, new luxury is actually um, a paradigm shift regarding values and, and attitudes. And I think you you, you summarize that quite, quite uh, well. And in the past, I mean, luxury has been about status and possession, as you pointed out. But new luxury now is, is about experience and, and meaningfulness. Yeah, I think uh, I can also second that. My video is a little shaky, so I turned it off. I hope everybody can understand me. I mean, I think previously um, luxury was really defined by price, uh, by, by by presentation, and it has come more towards um, yeah um, about the experience and about about fulfilling yourself, so about the individual, and um, yeah, what is important to the individual rather than the masses. 
Right, and personalization plays such an important part and role in in um, in luxury. I mean, how do we personalize this experience? How do we how do we make it? You know, because each individual is so special, each individual defines luxury. How can we really bring that that personalization forward um, in 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 the luxury brands and the luxury um, ideas? Uh, and concepts that we put forward. Um, well, I mean, that's actually one of the reasons why uh, we engage in Startup Autobahn. Um, talking about topics such as health, fitness, communities, they all play an important role in, in new luxury as they relate to very personal and important aspects of our customers. And I mean, talking about Porsche to remain relevant, we need to take these aspects these very personal aspects very seriously and find Porsche-like solutions to address them properly. I mean, we come from a from a slightly different angle. I think we are not a, a huge company yet. Um, we are Berlin-based. We are four years old. We are bootstrapped and um, we have very limited resources. So uh, when we uh, try to define luxury, we try to basically just challenge the status quo, think about the product, how it's currently you know, made um, how it's currently presented, communicated and sold in the end. Um, and what we do is really engage the community. So we ask the people, hey, OK, so we have this basic product. So what's important? What defines value of this product to you? Um, so we have ongoing uh, surveys. Uh, we have um, consistent and constant options to personalize the product, uh, personalize the product um, when you want to purchase it. I mean, we are an online based business. Our, our distribution is much less complicated, I think, than, than Porsche. Um, yeah, and then um, we try to offer the customer a very unique product. Um, I mean, you know, the shape, uh, the material, um, the ingredients used, um, and in the end, the, the possibility to, to personalize the product and get a handwritten card upon, uh, upon the reception. I mean, these are little details, but in the end, uh, I think it shows the, the meaning and the importance of the customer to us and uh, will define luxury for the customer. Right. And, and you, George, you, you create products based upon the customer's specification, I mean, based upon what the customers are really looking for. So that is a, a very much a personalization idea. 100%. I mean, Henry Ford obviously uh, would not be happy uh, as he uh, always, you know, thought about um, that people would only yes. ask for faster horses uh, and not for cars. Uh, but yeah, we, we try to listen to the customer as much as we can. And obviously, um, opportunities are different nowadays in terms of communication and transparency. Right. And Sebastian, I am really intrigued by how you are personalizing the driving experience with with these health and wellness um, apps that 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 you've been talking about. I mean, it's that, you know, the car is no longer just four wheels and a mechanical engine. It's become a tech device. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, George was referring to uh, Henry Ford. Uh, I can refer to Ferry Porsche, our founder who 72 years ago said, in the beginning, I looked around and could not uh, quite find the car I dreamed of, so I decided to build it myself. Um, this dream of, of a single person has actually turned into the dream of our individual customers. And um, as George does uh, at Buckle and Seam, we do the same thing uh, on a large scale, personalizing and individualizing our cars uh, to the fullest and um, thereby taking our customers just very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. It, it to me it seems like it's 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 the new need because of the nature of luxury being personal and that may be part of this new luxury um, concept and paradigm shift that it's becoming very personalized. Yeah. Now I'm also interested in how you view the societal changes um, that that we are facing. I mean we've had the we have the millennial the generational shift which is often a big problem. A, a stumbling block for many brands when they when they see their their target market generation shift. But we're also seeing tremendous societal changes by the coronavirus, by um, again the this this income inequality, the protests. How are you navigating this this new world and balancing 
the tradition of luxury, which has a has you know stems from uh, you know some many luxury brands are hundreds of years old, versus you know the future, the new luxury. Pam, um, I mean we're facing so many different challenges right now. I think uh, COVID nineteen, as well as uh, the ongoing demonstrations uh, across the pond in in the. Uh, have a really an underlying problem that uh, we have been um, um, facing as a society. Um, and with a new generation, I think um, the need or the quest for a more sustainable future where we can uh, um, not only with each other and respect each other as individuals, but also um, care for the planet that provides all the, uh, all the commodities and all the food for us. Uh, and the future uh, is something that has really increased. So for us, it's been important to acknowledge the deficiencies that our product has as a as a leather product, as an extremely uh, and looked at each material and and thought, okay, so how can we how we, can we create something less harmful for the environment? How can we cater to um, communities and social groups that have been you know admitted? In the future, by by the luxury uh, by the by the luxury side, such as uh, the people making the products or their families, um, and then made the decision to you know use or avoid using certain materials, and obviously also um, create in the end our own factories and control the entire supply chain to uh, really impact the lives of the people. That Make our products. Um, um, yeah, this is this is where uh, we, as a niche brand, really try to define um, how society uh, take the next step or yeah, contribute in taking the next step. Well, George, as as a new luxury brand, since you're four years old, you don't have to correct any of the mistakes that were made a hundred years ago. Um, so you, I think, have an advantage that you can align your brand to today, not having to, you know, kind of go back and pick up the pieces from the past. It is, we, we are a little more flexible right now, extremely curious about how the industry um, deals with the change. I mean, back in the days, um, change was really done by growing up. At this point, when we look at physical products, and I mean, today we have traditional lux luxury houses such as Gucci, you know, uh, uh, which I think is, is amazing to see. And I mean, all of this in a time span of 15 to 20 years, so it really shows that if the voice of the community or uh, that will seek for luxury uh, is loud enough, uh, I think we can provoke change. And, and Sebastian, I mean, you are what I would consider a traditional luxury brand. How have you been able to stay, you know, ahead of, and and respond to the challenges of new new luxury? I mean, I'm I'm incredibly impressed with what you've done, but it must have been, you know, cultural so cultural challenges outside as well as cultural challenges uh, inside the company. I would imagine. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, Pam, you're totally correct. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good question. But um, uh, on the other hand, um, it was not actually that 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 um, difficult because I mean, what what we do at Porsche is we just simply listen to our customers and um, um, not only to them but also to to people um, that should be our customers but actually aren't. So um, um, we ask them what are the reasons we are exploring. Uh, why they opted for for other cars? I mean, we also take uh, challenges um, um, pointed out uh, earlier very seriously, uh, and making finally very meaningful uh, offerings uh, as a result. So um, I think one thing that, that that should be clear is that it's definitely on the one hand um, an advantage to to be a strong brand, to have a strong brand, to have a kind of a heritage. Um, but still, you need to, to, to need to look into the future. You need to stay hungry. You need to be creative and definitely open minded. Right, right. Well, I think that's that is uh, great how you 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 actually ask people why they don't 
um, you know, choose Porsche. I mean, that that's uh, I think that's a very that could gain tremendous insight and powerful insights. Um, and then I just want to I just want to close because, you know, we we looked at Einstein and he talked about the clutter and the discord and the difficulties that we face. But let's end on a good note. I mean, how can we find simplicity and harmony and opportunity in this new world of luxury, which I think offers tremendous opportunities for brands that can adapt and, and, and can really connect with the consumer. So I'd love to hear your perspectives on simplicity, harmony, and opportunity. Sebastian, oh, if that's okay. okay good. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, very wise words, obviously. Um, it was shown to us over the last three months, um, and I think that can be applied to uh, any product, any sector, be it uh, services or, or physical products, is really to um, maybe stop looking too far and a little bit closer around you. Uh, is, um, as you uh, Sebastian is really speak, you know, about the current problems that your customers have. I mean, obviously you have a big, uh, a big goal in your head, but like what's, what's painting them, what's them uh, looking into your com uh, community environment and then take more solid decisions for the future and not, um, you know, continue to rush and think and kind of how the trend will behave in two or three years. Uh, but rather, you know, listen to the people today um, and and go from there. And Sebastian, your thoughts on simplicity, harmony and opportunity? Yeah, I mean, um, we elaborated a lot on um, customers and community, that's uh, for sure. But also as a, as a, um, as a company in the size of, of Porsche, you need to take your social uh, responsibility very seriously. Um, and we're not talking about only as I said, our community, we need to take care of our employees about the uh, the physical presences we are, we are at. And um, yeah, take a closer look on, on your proximate uh, uh, neighbors uh, rather than, you know, uh, getting the, the last euro uh, uh, out of out of one car. Uh, I think philanthropy in, in general has become standard um, and, and we need to take this very, very seriously. Great. And I, I, I've got to say that, you know, for, for all luxury brands, Porsche, you know, especially, you want to make your car, you want to make your brand the simple choice, which is really about building brands, building connections, make it the simple choice for the customer. Well, um, with that, I want to, I want to thank you. And uh, just a kind of a reminder that you know, there are lots and lots of ideas. There's lots of, of uh, ideas out there about uh, ways to make luxury. But what's really important is not just the ideas, but it's making those ideas happen. So I want to leave all of you with good luck to turning your innovation ideas and your new luxury ideas into action and brands that you can deliver to your consumers. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Pam. Georg, Sebastian, thank you for joining us and having this really nice spontaneous discussion today. And um, I will share with you afterwards the recording and the feedback. And yeah, let's jump on a call to recap the day. With this, let us make us this idea happen. Pam, it was a perfect end sentence you put at the end. So all of you, thank you to the startup speaker. A big thank you to our co-host today, Porsche, um, Christoph, Andy, and Lars. And I'm really excited to see if there maybe are coming some uh, collaboration out of today. Um, overall, I think I learned a lot and I hope the same for you. You could take something with for you personally or um, for your uh, business life. And um, if you want to recap today and yeah, learn a little bit more feel free to um, head over to our Startup Autobahn page. I would like to ask my colleagues to show the slide with our blog post. One of our uh, wonderful colleagues, Theo, wrote about new luxury, what I already mentioned beforehand. Um, I think it's one slide um, back. 
uh, what I mentioned beforehand, when I looked for new luxury and innovation, I could, didn't really find a lot. Um, Pam, your article is amazing, but it was written, I think, uh, three years ago. So Tia was sitting there. She got all the technology topics together. Um, so only go to startupautobahn.com if you would like to learn more. As well, tomorrow at our Startup Autobahn Power by Plug and Play LinkedIn page, you will find the recordings from today if you would like to share it, watch it again, see something like special, uh, you're more than welcome to head over this. And next up, this is not our last event, so I would like to point out our next event on July 8. It will be co-hosted with um, our startup Autobahn Mercedes team, and we will speak about the future of vehicles. Actually, topics will came up more and more with now COVID-19. It will be about hygiene, contact less selling material as well we will speak with some experts about the changes COVID-19 did in the mobility sector. And this was everything about today. Again, Christoph, Andy and the whole Porsche team, our external experts or startups um, in German, or maybe only I say it, I would say es war uns ein inneres Blumenpflücken, to say it more international, it was a pleasure. And to all of you, thank you for joining. I hope you got a good personal and professional good insights and wish you all a nice evening and for all and other time zones, uh, a good night or a good day. Um, again, my name is Hannah and feel free to get in touch with me or my colleague Alina. She posted her email address in the chat. If you need any intros, if you have any questions, any inspirations, or if you want only say hi. Everyone have a beautiful day. See you on July 8. And to quote Christoph again, innovation cannot stop, uh, stop with social distancing. So take care, stay happy and see you hopefully all on July 8, your whole startup out team.